Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can make this parametric stair uh, from scratch. Uh, as you can see here, we're going to define a pi multiplication, which is going to be how the spiral is going to define uh, height. Uh, the radius, which is going to define and change the radius of the stair. Uh, then we will have the number of count for the stairs we want. There's also extension for the stair threads. So you can see here we can extend them. The thickness for each of these threads. And also a thickness for the stair riser. So just a thickness we give for this one. So we can make a completely parametric stair in Grasshopper from scratch. Uh, okay, let's get started from scratch uh, to make the spiral. The fastest way you can do that in Grasshopper without using any plugin is to go to the vector uh, and point. And we can use this point a cylindrical here. Uh, this is a base plane because we want this to be an XY plane. I'm going to go to the params menu and connect a point to it. Uh, whenever you connect a point to a plane, uh, it's going to assume it's an XY plane. We are actually saying that we want the base plane to be an XY. So I'm just going to give the point to the plane. Uh, because we want to make this a cylindrical, what we want to do here is a radius we want to define, right? And then we also have to define an angle. So this is going to be the angle. And also there is a height for each of these. So we can say H1, H2, and so on. So that is also controllable in this uh, point cylindrical components. Uh, to make that, I'm going to make a, s a range of numbers for the angle because it's a degree. I'm going to right click on the angle and make it degrees. And we want to say we want to start uh, from zero. So I'm going to give a construct domain, which is going to control the domain of the range from zero to whatever I want. So for example, I can say uh, 90 degrees to maybe uh, 1000 degrees with two decimals. You can control that. Uh, so that is going to be the end degree and I'm going to give that to the angle uh, if I increase the steps that is the uh, resolution of the points so I'm going to stick with 200 and give that to the steps let's name that resolution okay uh, as you can see here if I zoom in there are 200 points made for 90 degrees and if I increase the angle, you can see the angle here. Another thing we want to control is the radius. So I'm going to just give this a number slider and go back here. This is going to be the radius. Uh, it's not going to change, so we're not going to give this a range. If I give a range to this, so for example, just copy paste this and say starting from zero to 15, and then give that to the radius. You can see uh, this can be also uh, a parametric radius. It's changing. So if I increase that, you can see it's going to be something like a spiral. Uh, but because we want to just keep this number for the radius, I'm going to give that to the radius input. Uh, another thing we want to define here is the elevation. Again, we're just going to copy paste this and make a range for the elevation. Maybe we want to start from one to a hundred. This is going to be the height. So I'm going to name this a height and give that to the elevation. Uh, if I increase that, you can see that we can control the elevation, the degree, and that's it. That's how you can use the point cylindrical. Okay, now that we have the points, we can convert that into a curve. So I'm going to use the curve uh, interpolation and give it to the vertices and turn off the points. And now we have the curve uh, in Grasshopper. You can see that we can produce that in Rhino too. Uh, and simply by changing the end degree and also the height and the radius, we can control the spiral. Uh, another thing I want to produce here, assume that this is the spiral, uh, I want to have a line from the axis 
which is going to be the same height from the start and the end, and then loft these together. That's going to give us the surface uh, for the stairs. And it's really easy. You just have to go to the curve and use this line SDL, and the start is going to be the same point we started here. Uh, the direction by default is in the Z direction, and the length is going to be the same as the height. So I'm going to give that here. And now you can see by changing the end degree, this line is going to be updated and the height is going to control it here and the radius also. Okay. So what we want to do is to just simply loft these together, a uh, surface, a uh, freeform loft, uh, give the curve uh, to the first input and use the shift key to add the line also here. You can see that it's not going to give you an output because so if I zoom in here, you can see there are two inputs, 0 and 0, 0, and that's why they are not getting any loft. Uh, this is running separately, this is running separately, and that's why they don't give any loft. What you have to do is to flatten it. So I'm just going to right click and flatten this. So both of those uh, inputs are going to be lofted together. If I bake that, uh, you can see that this is going to be the lofted surface. Okay, after we produce the lofted surface, uh, what we want to do is to produce those stairs. It's really easy. You just have to uh, go to the surface utility and ISO trim uh, the lofted surface. We're going to divide this surface into parts, uh, which is going to define the stair threads. Uh, for the ISO trim, we can simply use um, math domain and divide domain two. Give the surface to the domain and give the segments to the domain input here. And that's how you can divide a surface into a series of UV count using the ISO trim. So for example, in the U count, because it's a stair, I'm going to just stick with one division. I think the U is going to be exactly, that's the direction we want because the V is wrong. You can see it's going to produce a series of uh, basically strips around the surface. So I'm going to stick with U. And for the V, we can say from 3 to 30, and that is going to be number of stairs. Let's just give that here and increase that. Okay, you can uh, see there are going to be some segmented surfaces here, but what we want to do is to project them on the ground because uh, they are going to be the uh, stair threads. Uh, to do that, a technique uh, I've used here is to go to the curve and divide the curve, which is going to be the line, the same number we have divided the stairs. So if I give that to the count, uh, you can see that the line is going to also be divided exactly at the point uh, from the ISO trim. And why I'm doing this is because I wanted to use this point for projection. So if I give that to an XY plane, uh, this is going to be the projection uh, of those stair threads. So I'm going to use uh, the project here, project an object uh, onto a plane, this component. We want to project those uh, isotrim surfaces onto this plane. I'm going to turn that off and uh, now we have them easily here. So that technique is also really useful uh, if you want to just project that onto to a series of planes, the radius, and the height and the end degree. Okay. Uh, after we have uh, produced uh, these stair threads, we want to get rid of an extra one we have here. So to do that, we can go to the sets sequence and say call index. That means I want to delete one of the objects. Uh, obviously, if I give a zero, which means the first object, uh, it's going to delete this stair. But we want to get rid of this one. Uh, to do that, you can easily just right click on the list and reverse it. So this is going to be zero and you're going to get rid of the last part. Okay, so now we have uh, the stair threads. Uh, what we want to do is to produce this part, which is like the uh, risers. Uh, you can extrude these uh, stair threads in the Z direction uh, based on this distance. So I'm going to go to, let's just bring this surface down here. Surface, uh, freeform, uh, extrude. Uh, I'm going to stick with the Z direction. 
And uh, how much should we give this extrusion? We don't know. To, do, uh, to find this number, we can simply uh, go to the point divisions here, we had here. And by using the set list item, which is uh, a component with selecting items, I'm going to select the index 0, which is this one, and just zoom in and hit plus, that is going to give us the second item. So the first and the second item can be used for the vector distance to find the distance between them. And that is going to be the distance for the extrusion. And now if I just give a display custom preview to that, uh, you can see that this is going to give you something like this. If you want to use that, uh, I think that's uh, good. You can use this visualization for the stair, but I'm going to go further and give you uh, some extra tips of how uh, we can find uh, only the stair threads and then the risers separately because we wanted to use that in our project, okay? So to do that, uh, what we wanted to do is to go to here, turn off everything, and only turn on the extrude. Uh, we just have to select the stair thread and this riser. To do that, we can explode the extrusion, surface, explode, deconstruct, and by list item again I can select that. The first face is the stair threads and let's find the index for the riser. So it's like 0 to... It's, uh, it says that we have five faces inside each of these B-reps, so it's going to be 0 to 4, because it's 5. And the first one, the second one, we don't want that third one and the fourth. Okay, that is exactly what we want. So now uh, I can also make a three to give that to the index. We don't need a slider here. And now we have the stair treads and the riser. Uh, now let's just give them some small details. For example, I want to extend this a little bit in this direction. Uh, I can use the Parkit plugin surface and there's this extend surface component here give that to the base surface. Uh, the edge of uh, the edge index we want to extend it's either like 0, 1 uh, or 2. We just have to find that so I'm going to say 0 to 2. Uh, by default it's going to extend it by 1 so 0 is wrong. 1 is wrong too. 2 is okay. So I'm going to just stick with 2. And now we have to define the extension. We can control that too. Uh, extend type is smooth or linear. You just can invert that if you want to. It's not really that important, but anyway. Uh, after extruding, uh, extending, we have to extrude it again. So surface, freeform, extrude, uh, Z direction, and this is going to be the thread thickness this is going to be extension length okay now we have them in more detail for the riser we can just extrude that in inwards to make it more detailed uh, surface freeform loft extrude to find the direction, there's a trick you can always use if it's a flat surface. Uh, go to the surf, uh, Params menu, connect a plane to your surface. It's going to find the best plane uh, on the surface here. And then just connect a vector to it. That's going to give you the Z direction. And then multiply that with a math. That's going to be... the riser thickness. You can download this example file from our website and now we have both of them a little bit more detailed and we can give this some custom preview to okay. 
Okay, we have a problem here, and as you can see here, uh, when I put this to 20, it, this surface is going outwards. So we have to fix that. Maybe in other surfaces that that's going to also happen too. Uh, and the reason here is that this s a plane is wrong uh, because it's not giving us uh, the correct plane. We can fix that in uh, different techniques. One of the techniques I've, I use is go to the surface, analyzes, and find this is planar and give it to the surface. It's going to give us a plane and then give that to the vector. Just turn that off and you can see that this is going to fix it, but it's uh, inwards. So I'm going to just give the direction a minus X to make it outwards. And I think that this is going to solve the issue. So whenever you have that problem, just try using the is planar uh, surface component and for the curves you can use this uh, curve analyzes planar component which also gives you a plane so that is going to also solve uh, some of the issues you have in your projects and that's it now we can simply uh, give some custom preview to it a s uh, display custom preview I use a swatch turn that off For example, maybe two colors, a yellow and a green. We can go to the rendered mode to see that. And if you want to see the edges, uh, I usually use uh, the surface a B rep edge. Use the shift key to get all of the edges. And uh, the human plugin display custom preview line width uh, is also good. You can give all of the outputs here and give it a shader swatch give it a black view and some thickness that's it that's good for preview I can turn off the edges I can turn off the curves and I will have that preview here okay I have also uh, an additional riser here which I have to delete so I have to go here and uh, let's get rid of the last one. To do that, because these are in groups, I'm going to just flatten this and add an additional surface component. We don't need that here. And what we want to do is to simply just delete the last one. So I'm just going to do the call index again index zero I reverse it and I think we have to not reverse this one because we reversed it before so that's it you don't have to reverse it and you just have uh, to call the index for the last one and that's it we will have last stair here and we are good to go now we can just control the spiral stair with the degrees, with the height, with the radius, and number of stairs we need, and extension length, and thread thickness, like this. The riser thickness and we have this parametric stair uh, in grasshopper i hope this tutorial was useful remember to like this video and uh, share with your friends subscribe to our channel so you get notified uh, about our latest tutorials thanks for watching see you next time bye